If you don't get anything else that I say, the reason you have to receive and release the Holy Spirit in your life is because he is the only God that is active in every part of every day, of every moment, of every breath that you will take for the rest of your life. And then he won't leave you. He will escort you to a heavenly home if you put your faith in Jesus who saved us and you will be introduced to the Father who provided all of it for us. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. So in the beginning when they said, let us make man, it was a meeting between God, God, and God. God, God, God. Here it is. Let's turn up. Well, we got to create something in our image. So God looked at God and said, God, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to drive home a point right here. Holy Spirit, come help me. You can say, God, come help me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. And Jesus says, you're welcome. Jesus, come help me. He says, the Holy Spirit's going to come. God, God, and God. <sighs> they still not getting it, Charles. Okay, so, so, so let me build this out for you. God is his name. Okay? But then God has a title. And we love God the Father. He's a good, good father. It's who you are. He is. He's a great father. And then he sent us his only son. Now, I want you to realize it was not multiple sons. It was his only. So it then is God the son. And he has a name. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. So it's God the father, God, Jesus. And then guess what the third God's name is? The Holy Spirit. You're getting it. Some of y'all are going to be at the top of the class by the end of this. This one, I'm just having to take you through it because by the end of this, it's going to change everything. But God the Father has a specific function. God the Father's function is, watch this, provider. I'm going to provide the heavens and the earth. I'm even going to provide my only son. I'm going to provide purpose and plans for everybody. But once I provide what I want, I'm going to take a seat on the throne of the universe. So if you need somebody in a different function, then he sends Jesus and his function is, watch this, very simply, I'm giving you theological principles that will guide your life. Jesus' function is Savior. So God, the Father, didn't come to save you. He sent God, Jesus, to save you. But this scripture tells us that after Jesus saved us, he doesn't have to save us over and over again. And I know some of y'all have backwards teaching in your church that tells you you need to come to the altar every time you do something and mess up. No, that's the point where you repent and you turn back to God. And I know some people use that as a manipulation tactic. But what Jesus did for us when you really actually receive the finished work of Jesus Christ, it is a done deal. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, I know I'm coming against some strongholds right now. But when you put your faith in Jesus, you don't have to come to the altar every Sunday and say, God, forgive me. He already forgave you and he knew it before you would do it. And so that's why he sent Jesus as the propitiation. That's a big word for all of your sins. That means he died for the sins you did commit, that you are committing, and that you'll ever commit. And what he's saying is your eternity is secure, but your history is jacked up. People don't know how to live. They know where their eternity will be spent, but they don't know where their tomorrow will so what did God, the Father, provide for us? A Savior. And then he said, oh, they're going to need something else to live. So I'm going to send God, the Holy Spirit. And his function, look at it, in John, is helper. Now, how many of us need help in an area of our life? Hands lifted high. You need help in something, in your marriage, in your business. You need help. Stop calling on the God whose function is not helping you. I know it's rough. 
But once you learn the function of God the Father, talk to him about provision. And it's the crazy thing. He already done it. He ain't providing anything new. He's just waiting for you to discover what he provided. Do you know that there will be no diamonds ever made again? Because when God made diamonds in coal mines, he made them all for one time. But do you know for the next centuries and eons, we will be discovering things that God put there years ago? Because it's not about finding out about God. It's about discovering what he's already placed there. What I'm telling you is you is when you get in a relationship, it's not about God help this marriage. It's no God help me find out who you created me to be. So I can be the right person in this marriage. It's never about what God will provide. It's what God's already provided. So he sent Jesus and then he sent the Holy Spirit to help you. Now, this is the one that's going to mess you up. I've been hitting towards it all the way, but I just need you. I'm just trying to make sure you get right theology. And I'm not being... um, Uh, facetious or I'm not trying to be um, into semantics. Like if you say, God, I'm praying to you. I'm not saying like it's three in one. Okay. But I'm trying to get you to recognize the the, the family member that y'all act like don't exist. (laughs) I'm trying to just get you to recognize that uncle Jerry, that's crazy. He's a real person. And the reason that he's addicted to that and the reason that he's going there, because he has a real story. Like we, we treat people that aren't like us or that we don't understand. We treat them like they're less than human. Oh, I know how you treat homeless people just because they don't have a house like you you think because you riding around in the Toyota Corolla and you live in a high rise that somehow you're better than them be careful lest you be the one that fall down and you've dehumanized people oh I see some of my fellas who have dehumanized human beings because you've been addicted to pornography and now you see women as a sexual object instead of something that God created because of the perversion in your hand when you don't know something you dehumanize it When you don't know something, you make it less personal. That's why some of y'all, the the, the commercials of children in Africa don't move you no more. You see the children with their bellies and they're eating out of thing and you threw away what they would eat for a week. And it doesn't even compute to you anymore because what you don't know about, you make less personal. Oh, is that why we have? Racial problems in the USA right now? It's because you was raised around all black people and you was raised around all white people and you go to the lake with all Hispanic people and oh, I got a black friend and he's the dad that you pay to work for you and he's the token that comes to your thing. The reason you've made it less personal is because you don't know him. And the reason you've made the Holy Spirit less personal is because you don't know him. God the Father is a provider. God Jesus is a savior. God the Holy Spirit is a what? Helper. And they all have a current status. Look where God's current status is. The Father. Look at it. His current status is set apart and holy. That's why God couldn't come to earth. Because he couldn't mix with the sin. I can't do the sin. Like for me, I can't do smoke. So like when I go, not because I don't like people who smoke, it's just like it does something to me. Like when I go into a hotel room or I go into a car and I rent a car, it's like I can tell immediately my eyes start to water. I like have an allergic. I can't I can't do the smoke. So when I go and rent a car and I get in and somebody was, you know, blowing the trees and making things happen. I ain't got no problem with you. I just can't drive this car because I can't do that. That atmosphere is not conducive for me to be exactly who I'm supposed to be. It begins to impair who I actually am. So what God said is I can't do sin. Like I created a perfect earth and I just can't do sin. So it literally tells us in the Bible that Eden is still a place that is hidden from humans because it is guarded and gated by angels because that's a space that only holy is accepted in. Only perfect is accepted there. But God is so loving. He really is a good, good father that he said, I can't stay without my children. So instead of them coming here, I can't let them come here because I can't do sin. Like I can't do it, but I'll pay for it. And so I'll send Jesus. And now Jesus 
has a status too. Where's Jesus' status? Look at it. He's seated. Hold on, what? He's seated. Luke twenty two sixty nine 69 said that when Jesus finished his assignment, that then he was seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Hold up. So when he said it is finished as Savior, he went and took a seat. That's his current status right now. We worship you, Jesus. He is in his lazy boy in heaven like that's it. I like that song. You sustain. I do. I do. I do. You sustain. He is in the lazy boy reclined, seated. Read the scripture. Do you know the Holy Spirit and his status? Put it on the screen. Active. He is the only God expression still active. And you don't even think he's real. Something told me to not go that way, and there was an accident on the highway. Something? It was God. God? God, the big man upstairs. He set apart. He's not down here. He created it, but he ain't down here. God the Son, yeah, 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 he's seated. He, he done with y'all. He had 33 years of this ghetto world, and he was like, I'm pretty much done with this. Think about it. The only God that is still active in the earth today is God the who? Holy Spirit. If you don't get anything else that I say, the reason you have to receive and release the Holy Spirit in your life is because he is the only God that is active in every part of every day, of every moment, of every breath that you will take for the rest of your life. And then he won't leave you. He will escort you to a heavenly home if you put your faith in Jesus who saved us. And you will be introduced to the Father who provided all of it for us. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit is God. And the crazy thing is I could go to tons of churches today. And there are people that are lifting their hands, raising their voices, and they don't even recognize the person of the Holy Spirit. Can I just sum it up for you? All of them have a location. I just told you, but some of y'all at the head of class, God the Father's location at this current moment, heaven. And that's where everybody's trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, Jesus, his location. Guess where it is? Heaven. But do you know where the Holy Spirit is right now? He's on earth. He's right next to you and he's right in you. Holy Spirit, make yourself come alive to people right now. Oh, don't think that I'm about to teach a message about him without him. Like I'm going to have random stops and pauses because some of you right now, something on the inside of you is starting to move. You're starting to release and wake up. You're understanding faith is coming to you right now. And some of you need to understand that he is a person. Why wouldn't you accept the upgrade? Why wouldn't you allow him to be God in your life? So God the Father, write this down. God is our Father. You can just go straight down the thing and see it. God is our Father that provides, who is set apart or holy, and he's in heaven. How do we know that? Matthew, the Lord's Prayer that everybody says, it tells us where God the Father is. Our Father, which art in, it gave you his GPS. Think about the scriptures you read and how disconnected we are because of how we've been taught. It tells us where God the Father is in heaven. Who is Jesus? Jesus is our Savior who finished his assignment and is now seated in heaven. That's why Luke twenty two sixty nine 69 tells us, but for the son, but for now on the son of man, he will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. I'm giving you scripture for everything. Who is the Holy Spirit? 
He is our helper, who is the advocate, and he's right here, right now on earth, and he wants to work in your life. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.